Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Java web development series. This time I'm going to teach you how to access post request parameters in a Java servlet application. So two episodes ago, I showed you how to access get request parameters. And it's a pretty simple process. You just got to use the get parameter method upon your request object. And now I'm going to show you how to access post request parameters, which is actually the, the exact same thing as a get, get request parameter, um, the same way of doing it. So let me show you basically. So if we open up a new servlet here, we're going to call this registration servlet. Registration servlet. I, I don't think I spelled that. Registration. I think I did. Maybe. Anyway, so we're going to create a new servlet here. And uh, so before, if we're going to access the uh, parameters from a get request, we would do something like uh, request. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. Request dot get parameter parameter and then provide the name of the parameter so like first name as we saw before and then that would either return null if it's not there or the actual value if it is there right and so if you want to access a post request parameter let's say the post request parameter is called first name then all you would have to do is do the exact same thing there's, there's no difference at all in terms of accessing it so what i'm really going to be showing you here today is how to send a post request um, just so you know uh, how that works and then how to access it after that so yeah, that's pretty much it. So the episode is done. I showed you how to access it. So, but uh, but anyway, yeah, let me show you how to uh, send one. Okay. So new, and we're gonna make a JSP file here. So new JSP, and uh, well, actually, it can be a HTML HTML file, HTML file, but we'll do a JSP. So we're gonna call this register, and we're gonna give this a name of registration form something like that. And we're just going to make a simple HTML form here that allows the user to submit a few values into a form and then submit the form. Okay. So we're going to have a header here. So HR H1, I mean, uh, register account. So let's say somewhere on your website, you want to have a registration form. This is be, this would be in a very simplistic way, how you would do it. So you make a form here and then we need the values of the form. So the inputs and all that. So let's think about what we want to ask for. So let's have an input for the email of the user. So type is email and ID we will give it an ID of email and then name a name is very important. We'll save that for last. Okay. But also let's add a label here. So a label and Google thinks I'm talking to Google. Oopsies. Shut up Google. Okay, so label and inside the label will say for email. Oops, for email. So this will connect this label here to this input here. And we'll see how that looks like in a second. And we're going to add some more here. So let's do what else do we want to ask for? Let's like let's get the name, the age and the password of the user. Let's do all of that. So label for and we'll say name. And then we'll have an input and this is going to be a text input because it's just a name, right? So ID of email or of name rather. So it matches with the for tag here, the for attribute, I mean. And then we'll just copy this to save us some time. So that, that, and that. Just add some space here. And so we have the name, the email. Let's have another one for their age. So age, and that'll be a number, right? So number. And then we'll have another one for their password. So password, and that's going to be a type password also. And that, and that automatically hides the password as they're typing it in, if you don't know. So that's going to be pretty cool. And then last one, we'll have another option for confirm, pa confirm password. So confirm password, and then we'll do password again. So password and ID confirm password, confirm password. Okay. And so I, let, I told you a second ago that the name attribute was very important. And this is where we set the name of the parameter. So before uh, we did get parameter, then the name here for a get uh, parameter for a yeah get parameter. So that would be the name that you provide in the URL. But in this case, we're going to be getting it from a, from a form, right? So this is where we set the name of the parameter that we're sending, okay? Instead of doing it in the URL. So in this case, we'll just call it something simple like email. That's a fitting name. No need to call it anything else. And so name, we'll do name. Age, we'll do age, password, we'll do password, and then confirm password, we'll do confirm password, like that. 
Okay, cool. So if you're wondering why we have confirmed password, I mean, whenever you're making a uh, an account on some websites, they do ask you for a second password just to make sure that you have uh, that you that you put in the right password. I guess that's a way for you to confirm that you put in the right password. So what we're gonna do here is when we send the post request, we're gonna send these two things of data, the password and the confirmed password, together in the request. And then when we receive the request within the registration servlet, we can check to see if they're the same value or not. And then we can tell them if it's not the same value, you can send them back to this form with an error or something like that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be magic. Okay. So now that we've set the name, which is going to be the name of the parameter, we can hear inside the form, we need some attributes to actually make it uh, able to submit a request. So method is going to be either get or post. So if you want to do a get request or a post request, obviously, and then action, Action is going to be the URL pattern that you submit it to. So if you want to set it, submit it to the registration servlet, and let's say the registration servlet is mapped to the URL pattern of slash register, then we want to set the action to slash register. And as you can see, IntelliJ is smart enough to match it with the servlet, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, so one more thing that we're missing is a submit button. So we need to add that. So when they click this button here, if it's type submit, then they will submit the form. So th submit the post request. So submit, and then we'll, <coughs> excuse me, we'll call this uh, button here, create account. And yeah, that's our form. Let's go ahead and check out what it looks like if we can. If it, oh, let me, we need to run the server first. So we'll do that in a second, but uh, let's get rid of this. Yeah, okay, I think that's good for now. Um, well, actually, first we need to set up the the, the uh, get request right. So when they go to slash register, we want to display or reroute them or forward them rather to this uh, register JSP file, right? So let's try doing that. So we're going to do git servlet context dot git request dispatcher, and then we want to send them to slash register dot JSP, and then forward request and response. So we're sending the request and the response to that JSP, so it should reroute them when they go to slash register to the register JSP file, okay? So then whenever they submit the form, if they click the button down here, we should send their post request to slash register, and we should be able to process it within here. So processing post form request, okay? And we'll save that for later first. So we're actually, we'll output something. So we'll say uh, request received. All right, so now let's run the application just to make sure our form is uh, made well, so we can, yeah, just make sure it looks good. So we're gonna set up the server real quick. So Tomcat local. Okay, here we go. So we got everything running. So let's try going to slash register and we should see our form here. There we go. So it looks, looks, it looks like our labels are not showing. So let's try fixing that. Let's go back to our thingy here. I think we need to, yeah, that's why. So let's add a uh, email. Oops, and then we'll add name and age, password, and then confirm password. Hopefully that makes it look better. All right, so it does look better already, um, except that they're not all on different lines, but um, we can fix that. Uh, I'm not really good at CSS. Um, I usually rely on Bootstrap. And I'm, I'm bad at that too, so. Um, but what we can do here is just add a BR on the end. So BR, BR, that, that's just an easy way of making it go to a new line. So BR and then BR. So I hope that works. Let's try that again. Okay, cool, so that's even better. Um, all right, cool, so that's way better, look at that. So now we have everything on different lines. Doesn't look the best, but it serves the purpose that we're gonna need it for. So they can enter all the information um, that they need. So their age and all that information and their password. And see, if you do that, it, show, it hides the password. So that's why we put the type to password. So that's pretty cool. But let's see what happens when we click uh, create account. So it should make a post request to slash register. Boom. And nothing happens as we can see, but if we go to uh, post request, whatever tutorial, we can see request received. So our, our servlet did indeed receive the request, which is pretty cool. So in case you're wondering, before we uh, try processing the uh, parameters, before, if you're wondering, um, what is the difference between a git and a post request? Like when should you use one and when should you use the other? 
So you want to use a GET request whenever you're just reading data from the server, um, not posting data, which means putting data. So um, whenever, yeah, whenever you're just grabbing data from the database or from your web server, anything like that, you're just displaying it to the user. Um, you're not changing anything per se. Um, then you would use a simple GET request. And uh, but when you want to use a POST request, that means you're usually writing data to the server. So in this case, we have a simple login form here, or actually a registration form. So um, what would happen is um, you would probably want to use a POST request for this because a after they click create account, we're writing new data to the server, um, which is a new account for that person if they filled it out correctly, right? So that's why we, we want to use a POST request for that because we're posting data or writing data to the server and probably into a database, right? So yeah, that's pretty much the easiest way to remember that, just when to use a GET or a POST. And also a GET request can e easily be reloaded. So if we just click reload, we can do it as many times as we want to because we're not doing anything important, right? All we're doing is reading data. We're not changing or manipulating data anyway. Um, but in terms of a POST request, we can't really, um, it actually makes it harder for you to um, submit a POST request over and over. So watch this. So we click create account and then we try doing it again. And now it says confirm, confirm form resubmission. And that is just Google trying to help you out um, by making it so that someone can't spam a post route. And hopefully that makes sense. I mean, you don't want a user to be able to create an account, you know, one after another, like just over and over and over and over, just spamming your account or spamming your web server with uh, post requests. That would be a little silly. So yeah, so basically in short, you wanna use a GET request whenever you're retrieving or reading data from the web server, and you wanna use a POST request whenever you're sending or writing data to the server. And again, you can't easily uh, send a POST request over and over. You usually wanna do a GET request when you're doing that, okay? Anyway, so now we can process the GET, the GET request after the person clicks uh, create account on the form here. So what we wanna do is grab all the data from the POST request, right? And we know what the data uh, we know what to grab here because the names are set within the attributes of the input tags here. So we can just grab each of those one by one. So we can do string email is equal to request request.get parameter email. There we go. So string name is equal to request.get parameter name. And then string age is equal to request.get parameter age and then string password is equal to request dot get permit parameter parameter password and then finally we want to get the confirm password so string password confirm password is equal to request dot get parameter pa uh, confirm password there we go and so that's going to grab all those uh, different attributes, not attributes, uh, parameters from the post request if they are there. If they're not there, then what do they do? They return null, right? So let's make sure that they're not uh, empty first. So we'll do if email is not equal to null, actually if it is equal to null, or name is equal to null, name is equal to null, or age is equal to null, or password is equal to null, or confirm password is equal to null, then we don't want to continue because one of these values has not been provided. So what we could do is send them back to the registration form with an error. So yeah, let's try that. So we'll do um, response, response, no, not response, request dot set attribute error and say, you are missing one of the inputs something stupid like that, it doesn't matter. And then we'll do get serve like context, I'll get request dispatcher, and we're gonna dispatch them to register.jsp, and then forward requests and response. Actually, what we could do is just call the get the do get method. That's another short way of doing that. Since the do get method is only doing um, a forward, we can just call that do get method directly, um, and then just pass in requests and response. So that's an easy way to do that. So otherwise, if um, if all the values of the parameters here were provided in the post request, then we can continue. And let's say um, in a real application, then we would probably have a database set up along with an account object. So we would probably just do like something like account, account is equal to a new, new account or something like that, and then submit it to a database. But in this case, we don't have all, um, all that obviously, right? So instead, let's also just check and see if the password is equal to the confirmed password. So 
if password um, equals ignore case confirm password and we'll just make it opposite so if it if it does not match then we want to do the error again so request request dot set attribute error and you can say the passwords do not match and then do get requests and response so um, just to reiterate I know I'm repeating myself a lot but I just want to get these concepts in your head so first it's going to get all the parameters from the post request and if they're not there then it returns null obviously and then we check to see if any of these are null if they are null then we could say you are missing the inputs put that into an error attribute and then reroute them back to the, the register uh, form here and then we can display the error to the uh, user so we'll add a thing up here so uh, we'll say p and just put error using expression language so if the error is sent to this page it'll display it otherwise it will not display it and then um, if all of the values were provided we want to check to see if the password is equal to the confirmed password they need to be the same if they are not the same then we'll submit another error and then reroute them to the register page and then it'll display that error and uh, yeah so otherwise if they are the same then what we want to do is uh, that that would be the part where we create the new account right so account account is equal to new account whatever something like that but in this case we'll, we just we just want to say something simple like uh, the account has been created so yeah that's all we need to do for now so the whole point of this is not to actually make an account obviously it's just to display how to get parameters from make post request and prove to you that that can be done all right so let's go to register and uh, do the get request so that's going to take us to this page here and as we can see there's no error here because the attribute is not there so now we're going to enter some information so blah blah uh, name Cody age uh, 123 password um, password 123 and then confirm password it will do password 123 and then create account oh yeah so let's since we have the input type set to email it's going to automatically validate it for us which is pretty cool so yeah at gmail.com so create account and now it's making the post request so post a params tutorial and it says the account has been created so um, we know that it got past all the if conditions here so yep that's pretty cool and uh, what else do we want to do let's try doing the uh, passwords do not match thing so we'll uh, give it a password that's not matching so we'll say password and then password one two three boom and it says the password does not match so that's pretty cool so it takes them back to the page and tells them what they did wrong Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to tell you about post requests that make them special or at least different from the get request is that is that they hide the parameters within the request itself. They don't display them in the URL or anything like that. So that's another layer of security in terms of so that adds like so that adds some like security to the request too. So in this case if you ever do have a register, um, don't do a get request obviously because that's gonna be displayed in the URL when you make the request. So a post request is obviously going to be the best uh, for not only because you're writing to the server but also because it's hidden in the request itself so it's not displayed openly in the URL whenever you try typing in your password and submitting the post request and everything like that okay anyway so that was a pretty short episode now you know how to send post requests using HTML which you should already know but uh, you know just it's good to know how to do it and then also how to grab the parameters from the post request using Java servlets okay if you have any questions about what I showed you this episode, feel free to leave a question in the comment section below or join our Discord server. We have a big Discord server with over 1,300 members last time I checked, so if you need any help at all with your programs, you can hop into one of these help channels and get some help. You can also just hang out and get some new friends if you want to, so just make sure you click the invitation in the description below. Don't forget in the description below, I'll also leave a link to the code for this episode so you can come back to it at any time and use it as a reference. I'll leave good detailed comments around the code so you can have a good explanation in text form too in case you don't want to watch my awesome videos again. One final thing I want to tell you about, if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month. If you join, you can get cool perks like a special Discord rank on my server, early access to these videos, and you get shouted out like you see on the screen right now. If that sounds good to you, feel free to join for, like I said, as low as 99 cents a month. Alright, that's it. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.